come alone. I'm going alone. Perhaps he'll trade my life for my sons. If you think you can reason with him, then you're as mad as he is. Charlie. Oh, no, we're coming with you. We'll break the place open. Your men have made very little contribution to this ghastly affair. Their presence there could only accelerate the death of my son. I'm sorry, sir, but I cannot allow you to go there alone. My son's life is at every state. possible ah. precaution, sir, oh. but I cannot allow you to go there alone. I am prepared to use force if necessary. Oh. I'm very sorry, sir, but you are my responsibility. All right, all right, all right, Trout. I'll do whatever you say, at least this. Time for me to make a telephone call, I hope. If you're quick, so yes. No brandy. Oh. I'm sorry, too, Trout. Dr. Vesalius. I have come for my son. He will die at midnight. If you must take a life, take mine. I will have killed nine times in my life, Dr. Vesalius. How many murders can be attributed to you? None. I did not kill your wife. No? I tried to save her. With a knife in your hand, Doctor, I have no faith in your profession. I was told after my crash that I would never speak again. The doctors were, of course, wrong. For as you see and can hear, I have used my knowledge of music and acoustics to recreate my voice. You don't have to remind me of your ingenuity, Dr. Fibes. Where? Where is my son? May I give you one final reminder, Dr. Vesalius? You will see your son under circumstances which may bring back memories to you. What is it you want? The skill of your hands, Doctor. I am giving your son the same chance that my wife had. You need not be alarmed. He has already been anesthetized. Your wife, no, Fibes. But you I will kill. But you can't, Doctor. I am already dead. Your son needs you.
Sergeant! Are you receiving me, Vesalius? That is an X-ray of your son's rib cage. You will see from it that a tiny key has been lodged close to his heart. It will unlock the halter around your son's neck and will free the trolley. If you are wondering why you need to free the operating table, then I suggest you look above his head, doctor. In a few moments, acid will be released into that tube. It will creep down slowly, inexorably. It will take six minutes to reach the outlet over his face. Exactly six minutes, doctor.
cavalry men. an ambulance for them. Well, what about... Oh. Right. The two of you, get downstairs and bring that boy up here. The rest of you, keep searching the house. We have got to find fives. But where the hell is he? Where the devil did this come from? Well, what comes out must go down. Brilliant. Uh, uh, no, don't touch it, sir. Much better leave it to us. Never know, it could be a trap.
He's gone. Vanished. That's bloody impossible. That still leaves the final curse. Darkness. Well, he'll be working on it. Wherever he is. All of them unfortunately true. It was here in London's fashionable Maldine Square whence Fibes ventured out to work his diabolical revenge against those responsible for the death of his beloved wife, Victoria, and the destruction of his own face, making it necessary to talk through an ingenious mechanism in his neck. My wife existed only six minutes on the operating table. You murdered her. When the acid reaches him, he will have a face back mine. most brilliant minds of Scotland Yard were baffled as the amazing murders continued, each more fiendish than the last. And in his soundproof basement of his mansion, none could hear his flamboyant songs of triumph and revenge, played on his organ and by his ingenious clockwork musicians. We have got to find fives. Only by a stroke of amazing luck did the police seek out Maldine Square. But the fiendish Dr. Fibes was prepared for such an emergency. And building his face anew, he entered the crypt where he had enshrined his beloved wife, incredibly maintained, neither alive nor completely dead. And there Fibes placed himself in suspended life, like her, until it would be time for Fibes to rise again. disappeared off the face of the earth. Fives lay in darkness three years until the moon, coming into proper conjunction with the eternal planets, shone upon the golden moon of the crypt, pulsing with a fantastic life of its own. Lifeblood then flowed back into Fives. Great wheels and motors sprung into motion and Dr. Fives once more walked upon the earth.
three years I have rested beside you. Tonight the glorious moon has risen to the exact position which last occurred 2,000 years ago, signaling the opening of this crypt and the beginning of our greatest adventure. We shall embark to the land of Egypt, where years ago in a mountain overlooking the valley of the pharaohs, I did prepare for us a wondrous shrine, unknown by any living man. There, my beloved, awaits the key to resurrection for you and eternal life for both of us. And once again, I call on you, Volnavia. Come one more time, my trusted aid. Join me and my beloved, for we have work to do to bring her back to life. the way to a pharaoh's tomb beneath which flows each two thousand years the river of life. We must make haste and find the river at its flood. and prepare for our journey. No, no! While I slept in sweet oblivion, who dared destroy my house? The safe, the safe, could it still be here?